Do a video today to show our new stainless steel step bumper for the Toyota Hilux Mark 6 or 7, also called Vigo in some markets. So this looks like it's chrome, but it's actually a polished stainless steel, so it won't rust. And you can check it, it's non-magnetic. If you're not sure if your bumper is chrome plated or stainless steel, check it with a magnet. So the outer skin is completely stainless steel. Right, so we've had these produced for us, and we've had them with a pre-cut hole to take a set of parking sensors that we're supplying with the bumper. We did try drilling the stainless steel bumper with a drill, and it's very, very difficult. So we gave up on that, went back to the factory, and we've had them made with holes cut ready. So we, the bumper comes, let me show you. So there's the bumper fitted with its parking sensors. So along with the bumper you will get this kit here now this kit comes with it's a pre-wired loom so you've got a parking sensor control box you've got four parking sensors here and you can see these just pop in so they fit exactly into the pre-drill holes you've got these little spring clips holding them in um, one point to note is do you want to do a demo Ian that these parking sensors you can actually remove them from the end of the so they've got a little waterproof connector there so you can remove them if you need to replace those which is quite handy um, right the other key thing about this kit is it comes with a little indicator and a beeper where did the beep come from the beep comes from this unit doesn't it yeah yep. um, and this has got a little display we'll show you but the nice thing about this is this shape of this unit is designed specifically to fit the toyota hilux spare switch so we'll show you that in operation um, we've also thrown in some cable ties and a scotch block connector and an eyelet right okay let's show you how it's fitted so so you've got a loom with each of these there we go let me show you here so you thread this end through the hole in the bumper push it in and you'll see that each of these is marked up so are they marked up just left and right yeah, you've got two l two r so it's best to mark one of the it's best to mark your outside one so you know outside and inside so yeah they so put them in order so yeah i would suggest i've done here that ian who's fitted this if you put the put L and then put on the outside of this inside and outside so the inside ones are obviously inboard here and then the outer board ones are there and then when you connect it up to the control box this little there we go okay so you'll see there they're all marked up so you can see you've got L, L1, R and it's exactly the same order so L1 and R1 are the inbound two and then this DS here is for the What's the DS for? That's for the the screen, yeah. So this is for this little screen panel. Um, and then the red and the black wire there are just the power connected. So that's the kit, that's the external fitting. So how do you fit it? So you just basically poke the wires through and then we've just run them along the chassis. So they run along with some pre-existing wire we've got running along the length of the chassis. Now we've run it down the left hand side and we will show you why now. So we'll just show you the fit in details and then we'll give you a demo. Right, so Ian, do you want to whip out that um, doorstep panel? So. That doorstep panel, ours is a little bit loose, but it just literally rips up. It's got some little plastic. Do you want to show everyone the little plastic poppers we've got? It's got those little plastic poppers there, those little spearhead poppers. Okay. Right, and we actually removed that other. Let me just jump around the other side super quick. <laughs> a little bit of trumpeting. Here we go. So then you've got that bottom, or what are we going to call that? Quarter panel? Uh, pull the rubber, oh, the little kick plate. And you pull that there and rip that out. There is a little fix in there we've taken out in the corners, like a little plastic nut on there that you unscrew. And then this thing sort of rips out there. Okay, and we've got a whole bundle of wire in there. And yeah, that's the clip there. Right, now if I spin back round again, we'll show you. Oh no, got the phone going. They'll have to wait. Right then. So, right, the key thing now is, so that's where we've rested the controller. Um, do you want to show us where the connection is for the... Oh. Okay, so you've got your red and black wires. One's obviously red being live, black being earth. The black earth we've just taken up and onto one of the bolts underneath. So you can just earth it anywhere. Any of these bolts are all, um, all earth points that you can take to. 
and then the live, if you trace it back down and underneath the carpet, right there. So you can see we've taken into the red and white wire, which is your sing your signal wire for your reverse light. So when you select reverse, you've got the ignition on and you select reverse, that red and white wire becomes live and powers up the whole system. So that's basically the, con the connection. The key is you have to find under this left hand seat the red wire with a white stripe and that's the one you're looking for. We got that? Can yep. you see that in the video? And then just at the back here you've got a grommet which you can go down to the chassis rail yeah, get so all, your, all your feed through and come through there from the chassis rail. Okay so that's the installation. It's not too bad a job at all. We've got no drilling or anything there and then it's a question of the operation. So, just the display unit. yeah. So here we go. So we've mounted, yeah. So we've had. So this is the display unit. This is fitted into one of our unused blanks here, just next to the gear stick. And then if we turn the ignition on, okay, it, it stays inactive until you select reverse. And then you see you've got this backwards and forwards, right? And then if we put Ian at the back of the car. Or we reverse it, we could reverse up to the roller door. Now we'll put in, and then when you see these dots, that, that means there's an obstacle on the left or the right, and the value you get is how close. So you can see it going down 1, 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0.5, and the tone changes, and then when you get to zero, you're very, very close. Okay, so you want to stop before that. Obviously, it depends on the type of obstacle you're coming up against, but that's the gist of it. You can work that out. But that is the parking sensor bumper kit demonstration. Good luck with that.